We're not gonna go fight a guy who lives in a boat parked in a cul-de-sac. He kills us, all he has to do is burst one fire hydrant, float his ass out of there, and now he's on maritime law. Hi, my name is Moses Storm, and the first drug that I ever took was acid. I was 15, and I took a little drug called acid. I always thought that drugs were poison, which was a very unpopular opinion with my older brother, Daniel, because Daniel was cool. Being cool, Daniel was also broke. So Daniel wanted nothing more for his 18th birthday for me to not only buy him acid, but then take it with him. This is the line. I can't just go body first into acid. I was like, okay, no, because drugs are poison. But then my older brother Daniel gave me that irrefutable argument that all older brothers give you that really make you see things in a new light. He just said, um, don't be a little bitch. I was like, you got me there. You cannot argue with that flawless older brother logic. Did you do debate? I'll do this with you under one condition. As long as we are home before dinner tonight, we would take turns who would make dinner in our house just so that my mom wouldn't. It was my turn. She was a terrible cook. The first step of all of her recipes was taking the batteries out of the smoke detector. He's like, yeah, you'll be home way before then. Acid only lasts three or four hours. And we call the drug dealer to let him know we're coming over early. I'll never forget it. His address is 2107 and a quarter. Already a giant red flag when someone has a quarter in their address. I'm driving around for 45 minutes and then I finally see it. 2107 and a quarter. Painted on the side of a boat parked in a cul-de-sac. All I'm saying is that if you presently live in a boat parked in a cul-de-sac, and then one of us asks you like, hey, where do you live? You might wanna bring up the fact that you live in the one non-land vessel, and that you're in fact a suburban pirate. So we knock on his boat window, which is a circle, cause that's how they look in boats. And this guy gets out, he looks like, like, like Johnny Depp, and a rat. He looks like Johnny Depp. We buy two tabs of acid from him each. We go up to the reservoir. We take the first tab. Hour goes by, don't feel a thing. So we take the second tab. Two and a half hours go by, still nothing. And my older brother Daniel's like, no, that guy thought we were idiots. He just sold us fake acid. Let's go back there and demand our money back. I'm like, absolutely not. We're not gonna go fight a guy who lives in a boat parked in a cul-de-sac. He kills us, all he has to do is burst one fire hydrant, float his ass out of there, now he's on maritime law. I convinced my brother to take us home. My mom, all my siblings are there, so just to be safe, I exile myself to my room where I'm watching Discovery Channel's Planet Earth. And on this episode, Jungles, they're featuring birds and their exotic mating calls. So these male birds will puff out their chest and contort their bodies, just ah! just scream at women to seduce them. A lot like real men. Unbeknownst to me, two tabs of acid have now fully kicked in, and the British narrator of that show is blowing my mind. Birds are nature's alarm clock. Just then my mom busts my room and she goes, hey, time to start dinner. Fuck. So we have to get to the kitchen, which means we have to cross over the living room where my mom and all my siblings are. So we're like, okay, we'll be fine as long as we just walk like human beings walk, which of course is um, inhaling as you take a step. <sighs> <sighs> Bowing to the cat and shit, just like, <sighs> nothing to see here, Sebastian, meows as usual. But once we start cooking, I can't explain it. We are on fire. It is like a Food Network show in there. I am flipping things up in pans, catching it behind my back. 30 minutes goes by, or a week, and my mom comes in the kitchen. You haven't even put the chicken in the oven yet? Turns out, for the past 30 minutes, we've been doing nothing but just moving empty pots and pans around. She knows something is up, so she has to take over cooking the rest of the dinner. The next day, everyone gets food poisoning from the chicken that she now cooked. Everyone except me. I couldn't eat my chicken. I was looking at my chicken, I was like, uh-uh. I'm not gonna eat nature's alarm clock. So it turns out the drugs that I thought were poisoned actually saved me from being poisoned. Tales from the Trap.